Hello, and welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends, brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency, devoted to promoting musicians and authors worldwide. Call us today at 941 877 one five five two to start your free publicity evaluation. Remember, we shine only when we make you shine. Please welcome the host of Interviewing the Legends, music journalist, author, and entrepreneur, Ray Shasho. Hello once again, everyone. I'm your host, Ray Shasho. Welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends on BBS Radio, brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Call us today at 941-877-1552 or email us at publicityworksagency.com. Remember, we shine only when we make you shine. In the year 1963, some high school pals decided to get together to form a group because of their love of music. After 53 years, several dozen albums uh, three of which became gold, one of which became platinum, and one gold single from a song known as Jim Danny to the Rescue, which was told to them to record by no other than Elvis Presley himself. This group of friends still manages to stay together. After talking to Elvis about the song, Black Oak, Arkansas was told the following week by their producer Tom Dowd, and by their label president, Ahmed Erdogan, that these two industry giants were also about to ask BOA about recording that same tune. Ahmed himself only personally signed five groups to recording contracts in his long, long recording history. And Black Oak, Arkansas had the honor of being number five. Many testimonials and awards have been presented to this band by everyone from Bill Graham, to Wolfman Jack from the Midnight Special, First Lady Betty Ford, to President Clinton. The uh, BOA has donated many hundreds of thousands of dollars to charities in their career, and both the mayor of Little Rock and the governor of the state of Arkansas even declared a Black Oak Arkansas Day on October 6th. There is now a permanent display in the Arkansas State Museum and the Barton Coliseum in Little Rock, Arkansas, dedicated to the band. Like Arkansas continues to tour around the U.S. to enthusiastic audiences, Southern rock legends of Black Oak, Arkansas, returned with their first full-length album of all new recordings in more than 30 years. Founding members Jim Danny Mangrum and Ricky Lee Reynolds have been keeping the spirit of BOA alive, and their songwriting partnership makes this album an essential release in the band's much-heralded catalog. Underdog Heroes includes a very special recording of virtuoso guitarist Sean Lane, record, uh, regarded by many as one of the fastest guitar players to ever live, and a member of the BOA clan since 1978 until his passing in 2003. Please welcome the legendary voice of Black Oak, Arkansas, Jim Danny Mangrum, to Interviewing the Legends. Hello, Jim. Hey, brother. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm here in Florida, and I think you're in Memphis. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm in Memphis right now. Uh, we're starting a tour in July. We're doing uh, the uh, anniversary of, uh, of the uh, Woodstock uh, festival that happened. It was so, so historic. But then they're doing 30 days after that across the nation and doing, uh, and doing remember Woodstock or whatever. But we didn't make the first one because we were in Seattle, Washington at the time, getting in a band house at the Golden Earring we were there and wrote Hot and Nasty there in the bathroom. <laughs> it was a joke song, sort of like the Teas and Beer was for Frank, another one of my heroes. <laughs> but, uh, it, you know, this time we get to, we definitely, we didn't rip off no bands or nothing, but, uh, Normal Bean, this guy that was at the overall zone in the big cowboy hat, which first was shot. Right. When they didn't have any bands yet, they had 300,000 people out there. He got them all beaten on empty beer cans and everything else. They're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right. So since we did make, we started using, we put that in front of electricity. <laughs> and it's like, they're really glad that we did it because now they want us to lengthen it a little bit and do crowd participation again. And I don't, I love crowd participation. Well, but, you know, I love to play. 
Yeah, Black Oak, Arkansas. They should have, they should have never let, let me get away with it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you influence so many lead singers, you know. One in particular is uh, uh, David Lee Roth, who, you know, copied your style, you know, like like to the team. Yeah, you can't do it now, man. You can't let me. Yeah, I know. He doesn't look right. <laughs> He's still playing, but he looks like Dr. Smith in, in uh, Lost in Space. But I like David. I always thought he was like Chef the Green of Rock and Roll. But uh, Eddie used to always try to make David Intimidator bring me to surprise parties or something. I didn't know I was being a surprise and shit like that. And after a while, me and David realized what was going on. Is we kind of got, <laughs> we were like, you know, they put me in their movie because uh, uh, every time somebody asked me, you know, David Ross told everything you got. I said, no, he didn't. I was there. I told him he could have it for free. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's a flattering thing to think that, you know, that's what they like, that kind of style is from, man. At least I know the crowd's getting sight as well as sound. But after a while, they all, the, the ones that try to do that, they realize that if you don't love it like you're dandy, it's a, it's a hard road to hold. It's a lot of work. It is, yeah. Because <laughs> you got to love it a lot for it not to be work. Yeah. I love to play. Well, you get you guys are great in concert, man. I've seen you a couple of times back in the day, you know, when you guys were at your peak. And, uh, you know, I, I love to watch you guys. You know, I remember when you used to break your guitars. I think the last interview we did, you said they were Jap- actually Japanese guitars, right? They were cheap. Yeah, they were Japanese guitars. It looked sort of like, uh, hollow body, uh, Gibson, uh, you know, uh, stereotype of, uh, what was it, SU or was it, no, uh, no, it's just used for solid parts. Right. I don't know nothing about guitars anymore because I'm 71 and I got brain parts every day. <laughs> Hey, so do I, man. <laughs> I mean, I got my weight down, and Ricky's even got his weight down some, because, I mean, he went to culinary school for two and a half years. Right. Right, you know, little by little, and he's a great cook. When I lived with him, I got to be jumpy dandy, but it was like taking my luggage over stage with me, and he could help it, he just liked to eat the what he cooked. He got pretty big, too, but, uh, it's, uh, you know, he's not like, we've been opposites all our life. Right. But he had long hair, because he was like a surfer coming from California, but he's born in Manila, Arkansas. And when he came back to where he was grown up, when we was at school together, It wouldn't be the same band without you. <laughs> There's no way. You're, you're, you're the man. I said it wouldn't be the same band without you, man. When you know a lot of a lot of groups today, they get these guys, um, you know, from other bands. Well, Johnny did a good job, you know, with uh, Little Skinner, you know, yep. after Ronnie. And yet, I say we can't be Little Skinner without Ronnie. Man, said, well, I'm gonna tell you something. I said, Ronnie's in heaven. Be proud of his little brother because the fans what makes a difference. If they think they want to, they want a band to keep going to play, keep going hear the songs live that they're they favor and they, you know. But that's the fans that make the difference. Right. And, uh, and I guarantee you, Ronnie's proud of Johnny. Yeah. What he did. Yeah. He, he does a good job. I agree with you. I, I want to talk about under underdog heroes, man. I, I gave it five stars. I, I liked it. I really liked it. Thank you. It's got some great but, tracks uh, you know, on it. It's actually more about the underdog people than the underdog heroes that need. But, uh, you know, it, uh, I wanted to start it off, though, with that, you know, they, they freaked out in L.A. when they, I told them I wanted to do a Alan Parsons song on Vile Robot, you know, Don't Let It Show. I right. love that song. It's really Ricky. We did it on a guitar arrangement instead of keyboard. And, uh, but it's kind of a missile song for the, for the heroes that, you know, this is mostly trust upon people like Big Sam and Legend. <laughs> well, whatever, because I mean, that, that and I won't get you a cup of coffee at Starbucks. But, uh, you know, anybody can be one. I'm proof of that. But I wasn't trying to do that because it, you know, it don't bother me that much. It's just some people, because when you get famous, 
crisis management. They feel like they have identity crisis, personality conflict. They, uh, you know, they, they don't think they have a personal life. But this is my personal life. Right, right. And, uh, I mean, we, once we started it off, and then we get channeling spirits, I didn't know how, you know, even the, just some of the people in the band and things wondering, well, this is so, sort of mellow, you know. But that was, that was a dare I did that song because a friend of mine was a guitar player because walks with me in the eyes about four inches away from my face to somebody will write a song called Channel and, you know, Channel and Spirits. And I'm going, well, I never turned down a dare. I, I go for it. I try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was not that easy to do. No, it's not. I mean, it, yeah. It could have been a real long song. And a couple of my friends that I've, I've gotten high with, like Jerry Garcia, I didn't, I mean, I didn't quite get them in there because there's a lot of people, <laughs> 30 subs of people that have passed yep. away. Yep. And, uh, I wanted to give it respect. And, uh, you know, you got to remember the heroes. That's part of the theme. And it's a sin to forget the unforgettable. I tell them that too. That's part of the theme. It's got a lot of heart in this album. Because that Ruby's Heartbreaker, for instance. Yep. Well, I was, I'd been talking to her about every three days or so. They give her six months to live. And it's a painful death. Having a brain tumor. Mm -hmm. She's in 1994. But when I told Ricky, he broke up because he had me talking to her. You know, he couldn't write music. And back then, I didn't write music so much. I do because she's writing books. But, <laughs> good myself. But, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, all those people, you got to remember your heroes, and you got to be able to uh, know what, you know, but we've all stood on the shoulders of greatness, you know, to get a look at, you know, <laughs> the skip light kind of dango. Right, right. But this is, uh, this is the only way for me, I mean, I don't know anything else. I've done this. All my life since I was 17. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know I was good with big crowds until we went the third time to California. There you go, first few times we came back to the hotel And, uh, but the third time we had to stay because they run us out of town. <laughs> <laughs> so get out of town like summed up. But, uh, it's, it's gonna be, uh, you know, for us, I want it to be closure for like Ruby's mama. Who yep. didn't think nobody remembered her little girl and how talented she was. Uh, and on it, Sammy singing her ass off. Sammy, they would have loved one another, you know. Both times I went because I was looking for a chick to be on stage with me. And both times I had a little bit of a reaction from not only the uh, girlfriends and the old ladies or wives of the band when I did Ruby and which got Sammy, but uh, they finally learned that they didn't have to worry about that stuff. And, uh, but they were, I don't want to be background singers. They're going to be front people, you know, yeah. front women. Yeah. And uh, it's good. She danced her ass off. Our voices sound good together. And yeah. I'm, I'm Ruby Sharpbreaker and Ian were blue in the eyes. She sounded like, reminds me of Ronnie Spector. I swear to God. Yeah. And, uh, it's got a lot of heart on this album. Well, I want to man, I want to mention that. On, 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 the, on that dude and the others. Ricky wrote that. Right. I mean, everybody thinks of like Lord of Mercy. But, uh, it's, it was old fashioned boogie rock, you know? Yep. It, it, Sean don't even come into the solo in the middle. But, uh, it's, it's like putting a picture with, remind everybody uh the album underdog heroes which is available now it was just released and i guess you can just buy it on amazon.com but it's got some great songs and uh like jim was talking about channeling spirits mentions uh, a lot of great rock stars and legends that have passed away and he mentions you know i don't know you said like something like 35 or more than that uh rock stars yeah, in that song. In song and i didn't yeah. get everybody in there but the song would be too long yeah. you know but uh I loved all these people that we lost, yeah. and I miss them very much still. And like, and uh, Ru Ruby, although they're not here, you gotta remember them. Yep, Ruby's heartbreaker is to the Grand Funk Railroad uh, song, uh, heartbreaker. Uh, yeah, but I asked permission from Mark, his great friend. Did you? He knew Ruby also, and I said, can I excuse you, music again? I've changed the words a little bit. And he says, yeah, do it, because I hated the bitch I wrote that about anyway. She broke my heart. <laughs> 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 but, uh... You know, we've been playing it since 1994 when she passed away. Yeah. Evolved to this level. And we finally put it 
on the product. And our fans flipped out saying, we so glad you finally put it on the record. Yep. And uh, we also Tommy Bowen's song. Uh, you told me that you love me. Would you lie to me? <laughs> I love Tommy. We had Johnny Bowen yep. 35 years. She had a heart attack last year. Oh, did he really? We had to take him off the road. And, and huh. he, but he got a, uh, one of those uh, pacemakers. He, uh-huh. It helped him a lot. He's right. doing fine. But then he hope to have him back someday soon because he's my family. And uh, his mama treated me. She loved me. And uh, now bring me and my mama's besides my own. <laughs> Love me. <laughs> but uh, Johnny's kid and Enrique's kid. Yeah, J- Johnny. Him, dog, touch him, Danny. He's a scallywag. Who's going to watch out? He's going to get you in trouble. <laughs> Johnny's a good guy. He always said I was going to get us in trouble, too, because I like to say the things yeah. that people are afraid to say. In the land of the free, in the home of the brave. Yeah. You know? God damn it. You're getting the word they want to let us have freedom of speech. And you know, they told me if I was going to stay in this business, I better just say a song and dance, man. That's just, that's <laughs> that's just, that's just six and a half hours without a glass of water. Yes. I walked in the press book, we did a radio interview for Radio Free Europe, bro, troops over in Europe. And uh, I saw there's three guys, not one. They were the real, the real, and the top of questions at me, like, are you here to incite the insurrection or agitate the revolution? <laughs> are you an icon smasher or a taboo breaker? <laughs> I said, I don't really know what an icon is. I went and looked at that, that, that. In the dictionary, found out, and I'm not one of them. I don't see myself, you know, I, I really get uncomfortable with praise and adoration after a while, but I can understand it because, I mean, I got to meet John Lennon, I got to meet Elvis Presley, I got to meet, uh, you know, all these people that um, <laughs> didn't seem like I was worthy of this stuff. And, uh, why the Jennings? I was ner- as nervous meeting him as I was <laughs> any of those guys because he had that kind of a man's man thing. Right, know? right. Luckily, he already liked us. <laughs> You know, he said, man, you're getting your cool. I always love y'all. So you didn't know what to think about you. I'd, I'd keep them that way if it was you. <laughs> I had a ring of truth to it. But it's just been, you know, Billy Bob Thornton's one of my great friends. And we've known each other for years and years and years. <laughs> and uh, he was playing a couple of concerts with us back in the day. As he was playing drums in a ZZ Top tribute band called uh, Press Ombres, I think it was. But it's he, uh, he's been a kid. He's tried to get me to go into movies and do some movies and stuff like that. I said, right. That'd be fun, but it probably, I'd love to do what I do right now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't want to do that sometime, but, it, you know, I probably, acting, I'd probably like it better on Broadway where you've got one time to do it instead of 17 takes. But, uh, it's just, you know, it's gotta be something scary or, or you know, you know, sense of accomplishment. I mean, if, if it's easy, everybody be doing it. And, uh, yeah, I, if it's a little harder, maybe you could, could be more proud of it. Yeah, I think you can do but, it. <laughs> uh, I'm loving this album. We also got some great songs we get out uh, called 12 Bar Blues songs. 12 right. Bar Blues is about 12 bars from Beale Street. Right. For 12 Bar Tenders helps you drink it off of your mind. I said, that's you. <laughs> and I sounded like about 300 pound black man. <laughs> <laughs> Good track. Yes, Sammy B is awesome. I, I'm glad you brought Sammy B, and she's got she does a solo on the album as well, which which I yeah, love. Devil's Daughter. I wrote Devil's that Daughter. Song too. I, how do you like that riff? I was playing that. It's awesome. With an octave pedal and turned yep. up to eleven. Really? That's awesome. <laughs> it goes to eleven. And you know, I, I, played, I you know I played on other songs, but it's usually uh-huh. acoustic school rhythm or something like that. Just right. electric road metal song for her. And, uh, you got to keep a sense of humor when you listen to that because, you know, actually, there's a lot of the devils in it. In, in Unholy Trinity, there was Lucifer Satan and Vio's book, okay? And that's been settled a long time ago, but he was an angel, Lucifer was, and angels can't have babies. <laughs> that's what he was so pissed off about. That he gave us, this is part of the creation, the ability to create. And, uh, uh, free will. We got free will. They didn't either. You know, angels are the dogs of heaven. Right. Bad dogs, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, attack dogs. And also, uh, you know, man's best friend dogs. But uh, they got upset about man. It's like he's giving us too much. Actually, we couldn't handle it anyway. That free will, <laughs> I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> but free will is a great thing. We can will it so. Yeah. That's yeah. why I'm going to shake the world like Morocco one more time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you brought in that track with Sean also, because a lot of people uh, didn't realize how great of a guitar player that guy was. Oh, he was unbelievable. 
Yeah. It's unbelievable. He's like one of my sons. I, I, was, I was his legal guardian back then. Really? When he was 15 to he was 18. Huh. And uh, he was a good boy. And when he was 15, he could run up the side of the wall and do, you know, and do a flip while he's playing that kind of league. Right. With braces on his teeth and hair down to his shoulder blades. And it was, it was something I used to call him the Memphis Blur. I told you, I'm glad I don't have to pay you better note. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Got them. All of them are younger than me, and they all ripped out. Yeah. But I'm probably going to live forever and hurt a lot. Probably. <laughs> they always say, you don't look like you're 71. Nope. I said, yes, ma'am, thank you for trying to stay at you, but <laughs> I'm all three kind of, I got pain everywhere, you know, but I sing more softly because of that, but at the same time, uh, I, I, I think that it's, I, I'm, I, my voice is a lot better. I mean, when I was on top of the world, those five years where we was one of the top five money makers in the world, five years in a row, from 72 and 77. Right. And I had a bronchial condition of a two-pack a day smoker and never smoked a cigarette because mm. I smoked too much hash with a guitar player and had a manager to win the name no time off. Right. And I, even sounding like that, we became one of the top. I still thought, he's a character, we're going to go out there, we're going to see him do it. Because I thought, I'm a good show. I love my people. I'm going to give them everything I got. And uh, if I don't feel exhausted when it's done, I haven't done my I, didn't quite do it, you know. Like have a, have a good love session with a woman where you, you just you just drain, but man, that's the best way to drain. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's what it's like on stage because I love it so much and I love my people. Yep. And, uh, and you know, I, 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 we did meet and greet before they called it meet and greet. Yep. Uh, but I was a conversationist like my mama. Right. And uh, it's hard. I like talking about something besides cotton and beans. So, and uh, I didn't get put. I'd be doing fourteen interviews a day. And I'm doing them right now almost. I mean, it's just record company, thank God, really getting into it. Yep. Uh, Purple Pyramid, sort of like Atco with it in Atlanta. Yep. It's like a lot of uh, Tommy Bowling uh, records were issued on uh, Purple Pyramid, too. Yeah, I did it. I did a, I did a, uh, I did a tribute on the radio for Tommy. Uh, I had uh, uh, Vital and uh, Passarelli, you know, from Barnstorm. And uh-huh. yep, and uh, Tommy's uh, uh, brother sent me a bunch of CDs. It it, it worked out Johnny. really well. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny, he's a good guy. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's a great guy. I love my Johnny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we him. Uh, we, we used to say uh, that when we wrote Johnny won't be good, we go he's into porno and says he he. The guy did. I love that song though. It's like the illegitimate birds of, of rock and roll. It's like Trina. Do what you believe. 
believe, stand for what you believe, and die for what you believe, nothing can be more satisfying. Yep, you had a good life. And you always know, playing it live. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you had some really cool lyrics in these songs. Uh, what you know, Johnny won't be good. Today's rock and roll isn't doing what it should. You know, I love that. <laughs> it's just true. I told him over and over, Johnny it won't be good. He won't be good. <laughs> we wrote that for Johnny Winter. Oh, he did passed you? Passed away. I was going to send it to him, and he passed away. So yeah. I here in Memphis, and we were always great friends. Yeah, he, and, uh, he's a good guy. Yeah. For a long time, for fifteen years. Yeah. I knew that. I didn't think he liked me at all, but finally one day he said, "I always love you, Jim Daniel." I'm just not a person, but Johnny. <laughs> amazing you know coming from a uh, little town in arkansas and to, to make it as you know one of the legendary rock bands in history you know that, that is something you know black oak arkansas the town i'm from yep they just got a 1.9 million grant really oh. as a tourist thing from the state of arkansas awesome because of black oak arkansas and john christian who also came from there yep that's great his mother and my mother were best friends but he was a lot younger than me uh-huh Yeah. 
Yeah. You can keep them when you're 71 years old. Yeah. What did that song yesterday? <laughs> what did it sound like? <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, we got, kind of got better doing it. Uh, we didn't know how to do arrangements of the airspace on our first records because, hell, we, we never had no experience doing this stuff. Yeah. We, our wild, chaotic, you know, the kind of chaos that we created, like the solo in the house and nasty, where both guitars just start playing leads and they're not nothing to do with the hit each other. It, it, to create that chaos kind of excitement, which did not became the king of crowd control and chaos. So, God. <laughs> you, you, you know, the, 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 Jim, the last interview, the last interview we did, I was talking about hot and nasty, and I, uh, I really loved that song. It was one of my favorites. And you said it was kind of a joke in a way, right? It was a spoof or something. Well, yeah, you know, it was like Kitty's and Beer was for, for Frank. Anything right. you do too much, especially sex, it's not going to be special no more. Right. Your daddy would know. Right. But I would have never found out if I hadn't left black oak. I mean, yeah. I'd heard about fucking, I'd heard about sex, but I knew I wouldn't even find out anymore unless I left there. But, uh, there's a lot of good people there. It's a good place to raise kids. And now that they're doing this, I get over there and, you know, they have medical, man. <laughs> uh, you know, it, we've been smoking, Black Book's famous smokers, okay? Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we've never really did hard drugs and that kind of stuff. They called us amphetamine buffaloes when we first came out in, in the 70s, 69 and 70. And uh, I didn't know what they was talking about, even amphetamine. What the hell is that? Pills? Oh, goddamn. <laughs> but uh, we just actually, we were smoking more hashes back in there than we was anything else. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and pot, it didn't make a 10 foot tall book proof, like I said. And we had a good time, but then we let the iron brother pot do it one time. We was playing with them. And they, they got up there and smoked this hash. They couldn't get on top of it. It was on top of them, and they yeah. couldn't hardly stand up. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't hardly play their set. <laughs> I felt guilty, but I, they asked to <clears throat> smoke it. <laughs> I, I remember. I don't I, say no. I remember putting the hash on a pin and, and, a, and a cup or a glass over it and then getting... Yeah, this. <laughs> yeah, especially if you go to Europe somewhere, go to Instagram, you got all kinds of pot and, and, yep. and the hash and stuff, but they don't really... You have no paraphernalia anywhere. Right. You just take a shower out of a, a hotel room wall and make a bowl up on the end. <laughs> it, it, or if we had smoked under a glass, so yep. yeah. Yeah, we did that. I remember that. <laughs> But it wasn't good for a singer to sing that stuff. No, I start saying, no. I start saying I sound like Captain V. Park. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'll, laughs> when I finally met Frank Sapple, we did a, a festival together, and we had a big hotel where everybody stayed at it. This big restaurant, he's in the middle of it. And he stood up and said, Jim Dandy, come sit with me. And I never met him yet. I, he's one of my heroes. God, I, I couldn't believe it. But when I got to say, he said, I love hot and nasty. I said, I love titties and beer. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a great adventure. John Lennon made me sick in my stomach because he told me I was ahead of my time. And that, what I, the way I looked up to him right. and, and respected him, it made me nauseated. I couldn't understand. That couldn't be said. But then he, he, he let me know. He wasn't really wasn't talking about our songs. He's talking about, about the way I talk to the people mm-hmm. when I'm on stage between the songs. I don't know how to sing so I can talk between the songs on the microphone. I'm an agitator. It's taken change me tonight. But uh, it's, it's just... All you can do is all you can do is all what a man can do. And all I know how to do is what I've been doing all these years, half a century or so. And we've learned a lot. And we've still got a lot to learn. You know, there's always room for improvement. And uh, if we all could help each other, help ourselves, we could help ourselves with whatever we want to do. Because it, it is a free will yep. uh, universe. We can with it. So I'll put my will up with anybody's. If I know what I'm doing, I believe I'm right, man. It's hard to kill old Andy. Nope. <laughs> it's easy everybody be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been shot at five times on stage, Joe, in my life. You're kidding me. And it, it, it's a couple of times when I have threats and stuff like that. The old guitar players in black like of uh, Dirty. Right. Uh, Harvey and, and Stanley. Right. She's lost Stanley and Shimmy since here. Yeah. But, uh, they said, uh, Harvey goes, you know, some of my side of the stage, they won't stand inside the stage. I said, that ain't right. That, y'all better do what I'm doing. Just stay in motion. <laughs> be moving targets. <laughs> <laughs> and the first time I shot it was in Tulane University, was a black guy, but just because we had those uh, uh, Confederate flags around the right. Yeah. That's something I never told him to do. I, I think, to, you know, the Civil War was an atrocity. We shouldn't be proud of it at all. I mean, we are fighting each other, and uh, we lost more people yep. killing each other than we did in all the wars put together yep. in the rest of the world. It's a fact. And, uh... <laughs> I don't, I mean, I'm just asking rights again. When did rights the first time? That's before the Civil War. <laughs> you know, when they had all the, the petticoats and stuff and the, the racehorses and the pillars on their, their mane.
mentions or seven mentions because it's cheap help. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but, uh, hey, Jim. What, know, what, Jim, what, cool. Jim, what do you think yeah. about what do you think about the people uh, knocking down the statues and trying to erase history from the uh, uh, Civil War? What do you think about that? Well, history is history, but right? Be history books. I mean, you got to remember you can't you can't let stupidity. That's what it looks like. If your pride uh, makes you unfeeling to the atrocity that happens to young people in whatever color they are, you know. But I'm a firm believer that all lives matter, not just black lives. I love. I got. In my life, just most important friends I've had in my life. Through, you know, right up there, all my best friends are like a handful that went through the, all those times when we was young, all the way to now, the ones that are still alive. Right. It can be done. And the people, if we want to bad enough, we can change this world when we change our mind. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Uh, you know, I just feel that uh, there was so many uh, lives th that were lost in that Civil War, and especially from the South. You know, you, you got to kind of respect them as well. You know, this, uh, this it, because you know they they fought for what they believed in. God, it was in the, uh, from uh, up north. Right. The Yankee wrote Dixie. <laughs> yep. yep. And uh, the thing, uh, you know, there was, that's a volatile but metaphoric. You know, uh, it's, it's you know. We had to go through that change, I guess, having, I thought it was really far out that the, the movie, uh, Lincoln. Right. And, uh, Jamie Fox and, and yep. uh, uh, what was that? The Django, the, the Django. Right. Those right. in the same year, or, you know, this, cause it's, you know, that ain't cool. I can't be doing that shit ain't cool. Right. And, uh, no humans should be enslaved, but those humans should not have freedom. And we need more freedom. We need more happiness. Mm -hmm. We need more brotherhood and, uh, uh, you know, fellowship. We need to know our neighbors and, uh, not be afraid to know what they're doing. We, we need to have it for, you don't have to lock up your house or your car at night. And, uh, it's just, you know, it could be so easy. Yep. It, it was easier, but be doing it. And I don't, I just, all I do is try to make everybody happy because, right. I know that youth is angry. Yep. And I, when I think of the sound of angry youth, I think about how I like breaks against the machine and stuff like that. But sometimes some songs are not good for 300,000 people at a time. Such as the second time they did that Woodstock thing, and they mm -hmm. did great bands in a different situation and different background. It was, uh, you know, important stuff. But under the circumstances, and, and always at that time of year, you have rainy days, rainy nights, but it wasn't so, uh, hippie like love to spare change what you're saying. It was uh, tearing down all the venues and piling them up for a big bonfire and <laughs> turned it into a riot almost. And so you got to have the right kind of songs because if music is a medicinal antidote for the anxieties and right. animosities of humanity that's not humane, well then uh, we need to write all kinds of different songs to have all, all kinds of different illnesses and uh, for it to help out, you know. I don't know nothing, but I know that I don't ever give up trying to help. Sure. You know? Sure. Yeah, uh, you got a great you attitude. Find a way to do things you right under your nose the whole time, but uh, it's hard to see it when there's so many diversions and so many uh, things to take your attention away from what you need to be seeing. Mm -hmm. Are you are you guys going to do a, a big tour promoting the new album? Yeah, we got uh, probably be about thirty days for this. Uh, Woodstock thing we're talking right. about right now. Awesome. And uh, so far we have 12 that's uh, finalized, but they want us on all of them. And I'm, uh, hey, man, I'm, this helped me a lot because it's, it's good money. Yep. And uh, for years now, talking about over 30 years, uh, you know, I had certain people that, but when they don't get what they want, where they always imagine their heaven is keeping the star, buying the rest of the band, getting a bunch of musicians, giving me your salaries, and it's 50 50 with the manager and that star. Right. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. And, uh, cause, uh, his, uh, it's insatiable. Greed is, that type of greed is insatiable. We can't get enough once you start thinking about it. And, uh, it's just, I wanted to get up where I can get in a position to do a change. You probably put bulls on the back of my head. It ain't first time we've done <laughs> But you, for people's price on concerts to go see you, but nobody miss our shows. It's something that's, uh, it is a sacred gathering. It's a sacred ceremony. <clears throat> And I, I treat it so because you see that I believe it so. Mm -hmm. And but John Lennon told me, he says, you don't talk to the people, you talk for the people. Rick has always told me, if you keep saying what they're afraid to say, but don't you want to know why they're afraid to say it? <laughs> I said, if it feels too good, Rick, you have to do. Yeah. You know? <laughs> He's always been behind me, about 20 feet at least. And uh, I never planned on 
on any of those five sets again. In fact, we played in Road Ring or somewhere down south. They you know, had long hair, but they wouldn't, until we got the show done, they wouldn't just do nothing. But at the end of the night, we're packing up the van or something. I'd go meet this danger. And, uh, so the, my people would get that truck loaded up and come driving around. I'd jump in it, you know. <laughs> I told them I don't have to be holding them off long, but he'd be dirty right behind me saying, walking right next to me saying, you think you're going to have all the fun? I'd say, this ain't going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and he still lives right around here outside of Memphis, not too far, but he wasn't retired from the road. Right. But he, I thought he always thought he was one of the most talented ones in the original band. Because he sang better than me, but he didn't want to be, uh, he didn't want to have to talk to him. He's a paranoid schizophrenic certified, but he took a bullet for me and I went for him. Yeah. And he's a great guy. But, uh, some people don't know him, get a little scared. He's a little bit, uh, you know, they are really paranoid schizophrenics. But, uh, He's to play he's one of those big bass uh, big stage bass players, you know. He yep. just tried the way he'd stand and play. I saw him playing once. He was the lead singer of a band called the Letchers and uh uh we beat him in a in a battle of bands, but I told him that night, I said, I saw you camera on somebody else's bass the other night and you're I gotta tell you that you're the bass player that God says is meant to be with me and with be meant to be with us. But nobody knew is he always wanted to be a bass player. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Yes, I couldn't believe it because Jonesboro is a big city compared to Black one we would have been nothing. And uh but sometimes nature takes a choice from where he least expected. Right. That way it gets to be more mature. That uh is uh is taking his course. It is is Sammy B going to be on the tour with you? Excuse me? Uh, uh, Sammy, uh, uh, is she going to be on the tour with you? Sammy B? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. She's good. She's good. Family. She's from back home. She's good, we're good. together back to Black Oaks. Awesome. And uh, I know it's going to be, but the last time I went there and lived there, uh, everybody helped me. And, and uh, they respected the you know, with people coming through, they might kind of make this a more tourist type of thing because they, they want it's part of the history of the state. But uh, that's fine with me. But uh, they had a way of knowing that I could stay if it were if, if they don't have somebody that can tell everybody where I am. There's going to be a museum there. Mm-hmm. It's not only there's one side that's going to be for the town block of because it was it started in the 1800s. And, but uh, also, uh, Black Oak, Arkansas, the band uh, museum, it's going to be there also. Oh, and uh, cool. I can be there more often to see my fans if they stop by or yep. whatever. But we're already collecting up stuff that we're going to put in the, uh, the museum. It's got a lot of different things that's kind of interesting. But most of them are because he's a hoarder. He can't throw away nothing. Mm-hmm. And me, I mean, I can't worry about it that much. Uh, I'm there when I'm there, and I ain't when I ain't. God told me to stay off the grid, don't do computers, and that's why I got specialists to do. You gotta have them, because that's the way the world is. Right, right. But, uh, I, I think probably so, so people would go into some verbal power snatching uh, argument on, you know, we don't need to do that. People don't need to see that shit. And, uh, all I can say is I blame myself for whatever we failed at doing, and I, I know I failed my children, my parents in the autumn of the years to help them, and my fans, uh, for different reasons, I, so, I mean, they, they expect me to be better, and I didn't get to really do what I thought I was supposed to do, and it's not that I'm ambitious or whatever, I feel like I'm, I'm not worthy for what I'm, if I, I've been, I believe I'm supposed to do, Right. and our life has been full of divine intervention, and, and if you, you know... I don't know how to tell people what it is, but it's a brotherhood. We've been together for a long time. We do all kinds of stuff. We had bands that we looked up to and were really, you know, they were heroes of us. So we got to California and realized they were riding in different buses that didn't even like each other. Yep. Shit like that, you know. Yep. <laughs> it, it blew our minds. It kind of woke us up. Yep. But the, that last look at them previews out there in California, on the third time we went to California, right. they sometimes have 5,000 to 10,000 people out there. And I looked, I realized that I was good with big crowds. I didn't know. How did I know? It came from countless prayer people. And uh, I turned around and told Pat and we just, we can do this. I mean, I know it seems unbelievable. We can do this. They like us. They, we're like, they, mostly people, that they, they don't even remember when they went to Arkansas on I-40. Nobody knows where Arkansas is. So like, first time we went to Liverpool, <laughs> we, you know, we thought it was a great place for because Beatles came from there. We went there and smelled like dead fish, and you know, it was a depression, everybody's out of work. Yeah. And it was maybe even more amazing about the Beatles, but we realized that we might be able to let them have a few, uh, let them do a few day things about what it'd be like to be in Arkansas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then we got that lot around both coasts. It looked like Boonesboro up there. <laughs> I mean, I took acid once and went down to that the cove down there. It was a man-made lake a thousand miles of shoreline. But down there in the, in the boat at night, and it set, I looked up at the lodge from the top of the hill. It was humming. I got to think about what the animals, you know, were thinking about. When we, came there, we had a computer for a telephone system that was bigger than the one they had at Mountain Home, the town closest to us. But uh, computers were bigger back then. 
Well, I got a, I got a, uh, I got a few connections of Arkansas. One is that uh, Bill, I, I had a uh, a store in D.C., a retail electronics store, and uh, Bill Clinton came in. And I sold him a Walkman. Uh, my all, my all time hero is Brooks Rob- Brook Brooks Robinson's my all time hero. He's from Little Rock. And my my wife was born and raised in Kentucky, and of course Little Rock's right next door. So th- those are my connections. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it wasn't too long ago in Little Rock, they had a statue of Satan. Really? <laughs> All these metal, devil metal heads and stuff put together, and you know that really kind of caused a bad reaction. I don't have to have to deal with that kind of stuff. That's pretty. You know, that's one of the things they thought Black Oak was is metal. Right. You know, if you a monster, some of that stuff. So we didn't want to. I didn't want to be. A metal band, I didn't want to be a, any kind of band, just whatever day I woke up, I wanted to do something different. I didn't want, didn't want to have to, you know, that was told us it could be first, but then after we came out, they said, by then, it's like you're, uh, confused. <laughs> 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 uh, we can still play, you know, we didn't do any of the countryside of Black Oak this time, but right. we'll get some more game after, uh, we got one called When Rock Was Young, but, uh, you know, we'll be doing them, but this one here, we can, we put out, we thought we'd do it once, you know, for coming back. And we were, we're proud of our old songs, very proud. And, but we don't live in our own shadow, mm-hmm. you know. And our fans are getting, get, we're getting fan mail saying, do y'all still write songs, you know? Because <laughs> they're making do all these best of albums where we had, if not, we might have a few new songs on there, but mostly we had the one to cover songs and our old hits, like some chaperones and them date. <laughs> but, uh, I, I can just understand why they like that, because hell, nobody thought we'd ever make it the first time, and uh, a miracle happened. <laughs> and you know, it usually happens after everybody gives up on us. Right. You know, right. the last yeah. one gives up, saying they're never going to happen. You know, all of a sudden we've had them, in spite of that, and they all said, "Well, we're always with you." I always tell them, well, "I know that," but you, you can see me as a invisible at the time. You know what song I like to see you put in the set list, and you might already have it. Is uh, ta- is Taxman? You do you do a great version. Oh, Taxman, don't you really make Tommy Audrey's work his ass off of you to that it's song? It's great I tune. Love the bass part of that song, don't you? It's awesome. I love it. George Harrison himself got in touch with us. Said he loved our arrangement. Really? In the Beatles, because they they didn't quite respect me as a songwriter. Uh-huh. The guy who wrote something later, you know, but uh, he really liked what we did. And it was a good jam. It was a good jam. It's the best but, version. Uh, best best version I've ever heard. Stuff out there this time because everybody's flipping out over it. Yeah, I've got quite a few Of course, we'll uh, we'll we'll have some good energy songs and everything. How do you like Arkansas Medicine Man? Uh, that's that's one of my favorites as well. I love it. it, it it's kind of like mystical. It is. <laughs> but it's a, actually a lot of people say it must be about you. No, no, actually. Uh, it's about Sammy's gra- grandfather, right? Uh, uh, her, her dad's father, and he was put like a Cherokee. And uh-huh. uh, last time I we died here, right back because he's up on a reservation in Wyoming, and uh, and he was a shaman as well as a chief. Huh? And uh, which he's in touch with the spirit world quite a bit. And I missed my daddy's funeral, and uh, probably I, I, I hadn't have been choked up with. You know, when it's your family, I freaked out, and everybody was already gone, and I didn't know if take me, and the car wouldn't start. <laughs> I don't know nothing about cars, either. <laughs> but, uh, she calls up, and I haven't talked to her since she was eight years old, and on her cell phone, and starts talking, and says, it's your man from there. And she says, yeah, Grandpa, she's here. How do you know that? She says, don't worry about that. Tell him his daddy is with his mama. And his daddy said, don't worry about missing the funeral. He would you wish he could have missed it, too. Wow. And, uh, I don't know how he knew all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Except he and my daddy kind of vaguely knew each other because yeah. they'd see each other in the pants on Caraway. My daddy was around New Towns quite a bit. And like I say, the pants was only 11 miles away from Black Oak. Right. And, uh, I just, all I can say is I had a TP once, 22 feet around or 22 feet high. I got it from Whole Earth Catalog. Right. And I'm fixing to get another one. Because I'm gonna put your backyard, you know, for my grandkids and right. stuff, all them wanna play in there, whatever. But sure. I'm gonna lock it and I'm gonna get set up just right and uh smoke pot in it. <laughs> 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 and you know, it's, it's uh Smoke some hair. <laughs> it's a shame they they they're just not getting to where they realize it can help people. I know, I know. <laughs> my fourth wife, uh 
she used to say, she called it stupid weed. I made the mistake to say, tell me what I said, try to compliment her. I said, damn, honey, I could smoke two joints just to get on your level. <laughs> she got pissed off. She said, that's stupid weed. I'm not stupid. <laughs> she also got to where she couldn't go out and eat dinner with me. Even in the oh, five years after the fact, go to a restaurant and eat dinner in Memphis because there's all, watching everything we do. I said, well, honey, the king is dead. The killer's now. So if they want Caucasian, I'm all they got. And you're not supposed to notice all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm not supposed to enjoy praise and adoration, but the people, the fans, they have to feel like they can tell you what means, you know, but it's not supposed to make us, you know, it's not the license to be an asshole, so I'm saying. Right, 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 right. And, you know, you have to treat your people good. And never, you know, you're in the wrong business if you can't got time to give them autographs or answer their questions. Exactly. They won't never, if you ask them a question, they won't ever hear it. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and that, sometimes they'll ask a question, when you answer it, they forgot why they asked it. What, what was that the answer to? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, good about coming to Memphis here, uh, a few weeks, uh, been down on Bill Street, a club called the Tin Roof. And he always makes me be there. Right. I mean, He's been a good friend. He loves a new album too. He's so glad good. that we did it. Yeah. You know, and like I, I, I say, finding somebody, you know, the Cleopatra people had enough faith in us to, when we put a foot down, so we're not going to do this anymore. Right. Best of, and we're playing the old songs again. We love them. But, and we want our fans to know that we got some new songs and we think they're as good as anything we've ever done. And, uh, hey, I was so proud that they, they let us do it because finally we got to produce an album and show them what we think. Black Oak Arkansas ought to sound like in 2019 yep. or 2020. And, uh, don't get your brows in uproar, you know, hey, sentiment, well, sentimentality is one of the most crazily curious and mysterious, uh, kind of sensibilities. Cause, you know, you go to your songs that you remember in your, in your young life, whenever you're, uh, in high school and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. These songs mean so much to you. That's right. That, uh, you can always play the old favorites. Yep. We got our old fans and we got our new fans. Sure. The new players to the layer cake. And actually, most of the fans, the young people we have now today, it's growing and growing and growing. Mm -hmm. Change on the hill. But, uh, it's because it's like metal people. You know, they, our presentation, there's so many people in metal, they talk about us and they, when they say we're metal, I didn't, back then when we wrote those songs, we didn't understand what, what they were saying. Right. And, uh, but I like the power of metal and stuff like that, but I don't want to be, uh, locked down to having to do anything. Right. You know, if they tell me I couldn't have short hair, I'd probably cut my hair. <laughs> Not that I got an ugly head. I mean, I've got an alien head. But, uh, it's, you know, I, I really wouldn't plan on having long hair until they told me I couldn't have it. Yeah, but that's your trademark, yeah. man. That's your trademark. You gotta have the long hair. <laughs> well, you know, it's, uh, I don't know. You know, I, just, I don't see how people worry about stuff like that when there's stuff more serious things to think about than to just choke on the mat and swallow a camel. You know? <laughs> uh, we, need to, we need to care. That's yeah. all we need to do. We need to care. Yeah, but I, I, I don't want you, I don't want, I don't want you looking like David Lee Roth. <laughs> I don't want, I said, I don't want you looking like David Lee Roth. <laughs> Yeah, I've had people tell me, man, you got it. You watched David Lee Roth a lot, didn't you? I said, um, well, yeah, I guess so. But uh, he, he, for a while, since he knew me, he, he kind of enjoyed being the younger me uh, more than he should a little. And, and it just looks like he might have done more drugs than I did. I don't know. <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, I, I was flattered by, it, you know, seeing put somebody that liked what I do, but I got a lot from a lot of people that didn't have hair as long as mine, you know. I did with my scrubboard, I'd go across the stage and do the, uh, you know, the duck walk with yep. like Chuck Berry did his guitar. Yeah. And, uh, it's, I, when I saw Elvis, I thought he was having more fun, more cosmic fun mm -hmm. than any human I'd ever seen. And, uh, of course, he didn't really write that. his songs or nothing. Uh, he wrote on one or two. Right. But his voice was always there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he, he's king, man. He cut the path with a machete that we get to run down. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I couldn't ever understand why he liked Nixon. I guess just because he let me carry a power on <laughs> And, uh, but I can't go that route. I'm an anti politician, although Bill Clinton is, is a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And he used to come and smoke with us up at the lodge. This is true. <laughs> and, uh, but when I asked me about it, I said, yeah, I, I didn't inhale it. You didn't inhale it. Yeah. I got to laugh about it. I'm really mad. But he was, Attorney General, or, right. uh, and before he's even married, I hope I'm sorry, and before he's governor. Well, he's governor, he still would come up there and smoke with us at the lodge and pissed off Hillary every time. She hated me, and she, and he laughed about it. She says, she don't want to, have, to let you get close enough to start church. She's just hurting your charmer and your charmer. She don't want, she wants to hate you. <laughs> I said, well, hell, you know, I don't know what she did to serve that. My mama wouldn't like that. 
just a couple of years ago in, in uh, uh, how much went through that, a quarter and a test drop and everything. And uh, there's, there's interview, and the interview is supposed to go, but I was walking about the door, and they said, what do you think? You do everything, okay? You got this from up here, and you got what I this. What about Hillary? I said, oh, she's a red neck Nazi motherfucker. And this is a bold clip. <laughs> I met, uh, you know, they told me they knew that I burned the lodge. We had, we had that lodge up there. I said, but you can't try me for it once. But then the phone guy turned around and said, we'll shoot you in time. I said, that's good comeback. That's good comeback. <laughs> yeah, I met, Bill, I met Bill Clinton when he was governor. He, he was at a governor's convention at, at the uh, the hotel where we had the store, and he came up, and that's when he bought his Walkman because he, he was jogging. He, he did a lot of jogging, I guess. But he, he was a nice guy. He seemed, he seemed like a real nice guy. <laughs> Yeah, Bill. Yeah. Yeah, he, you know, uh, he did a lot of good for the state of Arkansas when it comes to education. Right. I do believe he is the wealth of the world. Yeah. The people's our future. Yeah. And I'm sorry that they're so pissed off at everything that they, you know, they're into fighting for the right to party, but how can you party and be pissed off at the same time? <laughs> that's, you know, true. That's, that's true. That's true. Uh, that's They need to start having more fun. Everybody needs to have more fun. I, I agree. And, and try to help each other get by on stuff. <laughs> Humanity needs to be like the rainbow of humanity. Because the rainbow couldn't be a rainbow if all the colors were side to side. Right. And we got to all realize that, uh, you know, we've got to exist together. This government was not ever supposed to run us. Government was supposed to be a tool to help right. us all be able to coexist and make things better for everybody in a common sense kind of way. I agree. And, uh, politicians, they always kind of take their special, don't they? They do. I mean, they get a lot of money for what? And, uh, <laughs> and you know, most of them aren't for the common man and, and, the, and the needs of the many. They're, they're sponsored by people that control uh, the world right. economically. Right. And uh, we should probably go into some kind of martial law or something since he's trying to be, they're trying to impeach him so much and you know, Mexicans down there on his wall he made such a big deal out of And, uh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he sure wasn't an underdog. He sure is the top dozen least cannon, I tell you that. So, <laughs> we don't tell him what's going to happen. But it's, it's probably getting worse for this better, but it will get better. You, you know, I, I, I'm going to make sure it does. I interviewed uh, Rich Little. You know Rich Little, right? The uh, the, the impressionist. Yeah. He, he says that uh, what Trump needs is he, he needs to tell more jokes. You know, he needs to be more funnier, and people would probably like him better. <laughs> He's always too yeah, serious. What's that? About me or Bill uh, no, no, uh, actually Trump. <laughs> oh, Trump? Yeah, he needs to be so funnier. He sure ain't got much of a sense of humor. No, he, he doesn't. I got to joke for you. Okay. Why? You probably seen our show, probably know it. Can I find you some of the Joneses in the phone book? Heard that one? No, I haven't heard that one. It's because they got phones. It's a phone book, not a Jones book. And then, uh, you know why it's so hard to get Washington, to letters to Washington now? Why? He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think they're long jokes anyway. You know, we're rock and roll. I think it's funny for the moment, so they got to, hey, kill time, I got a problem back here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> On the amplifier. You know, you used to, where you say, I can't hear you, you're talking to the audience. I said, well, you're sitting there and there's bored to death out here. I got to talk to him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Four times in the same place, I feel like my shoulder 
because they had a piece of bone that they by. It might, it, they thought it might end up being a short arm. Hmm. It, and I had rough teeth before the coach knocked my teeth out. We had a gap between them and stuck out. And I, it might have been a little harder to sell tickets if I'd have been singing Chim Dandy that way. They on my back and short neck on and rough teeth. <laughs> I, I think you're pretty good. Yeah, you, you know a lot of rock yeah. stars. A lot of rock stars have uh, uh, hip replacements now. So you're you're not there yet, right? Everybody, I, I was with a girl that took the computer before I was just saying, you know, but uh, but they took you know, everybody that ever just flips in in the music business, right? Except they didn't know about James Brown, but everybody that ever just flips had to replace both hips. Mm, that's something. And they didn't jump off high places. I used to do it when I wasn't getting paid for it to do it show the <laughs> audiences. Like going to a date somewhere in a uh, dance club and jumping off a balcony into the splits on a dance floor. You know, uh, the, the harder you hit your balls, you get spoiled, the better you look coming up. And I knew this, but I didn't realize that what I was doing was fucking my back up for it, it when I'm older. You know, that doesn't take you. Right. You're showing off every time you jump off the dance Jim, here's your here's your here's your final. I, is, I mean, I have an uh, interview with somebody that I enjoy, uh, which I have, and I thank you for it. Yep. But uh, I sometimes run from out a little bit too much. I've always done that. No, you sound. Mom, I think. You're a great interview, man. You are an awesome interview. But I, I don't want you to hog the thing where you don't get to ask some, certain questions you wanted to ask and later on. You go, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> But you, you told me everything. <laughs> no, you told me everything, man. You're you're great. Here, here here's here's your last question, Jim. And and I asked you this the first time when we had our interview. Wait, uh, I think it was a couple years ago. If you had a field of dreams wish, like in the movie, uh, to perform, collaborate with anyone from the past or present, who would that be? Well, well, if you had, the movie yeah, if you had a field of dreams, like a wish, like from the movie, uh, to perform or collaborate oh, yeah. with anyone from the past or present, who who would that be? Who would you pick? In my dreams, somebody it would be in my dream with me. Well, like it, like uh, it's a wish. You know, you're wishing to you like to you know uh, sing with somebody or collaborate with somebody. Who who would you pick? Anybody, you know. Anybody that's willing to collaborate with me, I, mean, I would be good. I seem to make people get in the way for some reason when they get around me. I don't understand it. I mean, I know as many people that are uh, uh, safe and, and wholesome and, and law abiding as I do the pirates and the outlaws out there that still love me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have that great respect for the dangerous, most dangerous people in town. And it's, I don't know. I haven't really figured out why, except that I'm supposed to be able to bring all of them together without, you know, I was at a party once about two years ago. Me and, me and the Tommy Bowler was longer than ago. Right. But, uh, Tommy is a little younger than me, but I, I met him for the time. But we were young, I was in this party, and I said, everybody's going to turn around, me and the guy laughing, and they said, what's so funny, Jim Daddy? I said, I was just talking to Tommy, I said, we're, we're probably the only two people in this party that killed somebody in the last two weeks, and boy, everybody just laughed. <laughs> That's true. That is true. It, w- it, is there a clown story, a, a funny clown story with Black Oak, Arkansas? Oh, you know it is. You know it is. <laughs> I, I didn't hear the whole story. What What is it all all about? Uh, well, we've been chewing really hard, you know, and uh, everybody was really getting just got to see us wearing on us hard. They're so tired, it's hard to even want to have fun. You know, we had to tell girls to go away instead of uh, have sex with them because we just wore out. We didn't sleep. And, and I didn't know they were girls at first, and, uh, <laughs> and, but they had all the whole 
get up the shoes and everything and the, all the makeup and paint. And as they start taking everything off, so I started taking a shower because I felt I didn't get into it probably 8 o'clock that morning. And uh, I was trying to get ready to go out there and do my thing. And here comes that. And I thought maybe my put them up if I, you know, is it, it, would it be funny if I put clowns? I mean, it's sort of like the, the cannibals that, that got those clowns saying, does it taste funny to you? <laughs> <laughs> but, but the makeup and everything was the white and the stuff off the face and the red off the lips. They start going in the swirls down, going down in the, in the, in the drain, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't one of those things where I actually, they wasn't bad looking after you got all the stuff off of them, <laughs> but, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't because I was turned on by, I mean, you shouldn't do that if you turned on by somebody. <laughs> and actually, anything you do too, I can't go be special in the morning. So right, that right. True. That's true. I was never found out if I had left black up there. Yeah. I went a little far to the next up last time, but I didn't go as far as people seem to think I did. When I was a sex symbol, I was married to my third wife almost the whole time. I'm an extremist. Mm-hmm. Also, I've had to, uh, it's good fortune to be able to be a single man that, uh, well, I didn't catch it, I couldn't watch off some water. And there's, there's a lot of things that seem dandy. You know, it seems like I have no limitations, no, uh, it's a line drawn on a lot of things, okay? <laughs> and, uh, it's, it, it's just, a, you know, everybody needs to, to love one another in a, in a good way. Right. And uh, in a spiritual way. Yep. And if they do it, their sex would even be better. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, but, you know, it's, it's nice for me to try to hold off so I can't stand it no more. I'm probably best when I do that. <laughs> <laughs> and most of the love is, I don't, it, it, it's funny because you can't, when they start thinking you're, when, you don't want to do your fans because they hold you too high of a scene. Yep. And, uh, you don't have to do nothing. They think it's great. You know, it's in your mind. Yep. I, I had a guy come up in a wheelchair too, besides an insect. Talk about it, people, if you want me to lay hands on him, you can't see. Really? It might work. But it's actually you believing in me, me believing in God, and you can do it without me. Mm-hmm. And if I did it, I'd be you know, the fan of worms. It might be a hell of a diversion and a distraction to the point that the Lord tells me I'm supposed to be doing this for. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a people's thing, you know? Right. It's a fellow man. Humans need to know how to be humane. Sure. And we need to learn how to care and yep. be thoughtful of, of others. We need to do the old golden rule without thinking we're, we're uh, put a separate across your forehead. You know, we do, do it the other way we'd like them to do it to us. You know, treat them like you want to be treated yourself, you know. And, and we might find it's good medicine. I have a song I wrote called, uh, The uh, Good Memory Remedy. It's mm-hmm. a good, me- good memory remedy because life should be a good memory. Right. You know what I mean? If, if we start trying to make more good memories and, and keep those, like, uh, a record of those good memories to where they're precious and they're, and they're sacred and they love all the sweet thoughts and write down the sweet thoughts because we don't have enough of them anymore <laughs> and just the simple things sure. that we could do together that we find that we were really get really yep. by peace and joy <laughs> that uh, it's a lot easier than we thought it was I agree it's the little things the, the little things make a difference yeah. it really does yeah yeah Jim thank you man for being on the show today really appreciate it uh, well, for- thank you you're a pleasure you, you too, man. For all the incredible music over the years, good luck with the new album, Five Stars. It, it's it's wonderful. I'm glad you guys are back. Uh, I hope to see you on uh, on your next tour, and please stop in Florida. Oh yeah, we will. We definitely will. We're, we're uh, also in 2020. We are. We have a, a camp outside of Tampa, Florida. It was a, oh, good. a benefit for uh, Shriners. Uh, right. Kids Park. Yeah, Shriners are big down here. Yep. Or something like that. Shriners Masons. Yep. And uh, it's, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's going to be in, in uh, February 2020, on the 21st. Oh, awesome. I'm, I'm only like 40, I'm 40 minutes from Tampa. So that's good. Well, then I will be looking forward to seeing you. Me too, and, man. Uh, this is my cell phone, so when you okay. come and get me, you know, give me a ring and I'll put you on a guest list with whoever you want to bring. I, I appreciate and, it. Uh, you don't have to bring nobody if you want to, but I promise to behave whatever I hate it is. <laughs> I can't, I'm just, I don't know what, I don't mean to not behave, I just, yeah. I'm a little rambunctious and, yep. I, I, I'm not, I have no malicious intent, I don't understand why people want to, no. study uh, the will of, of good nature, you know. Let's don't be so paranoid. We can't uh, have fun with each other. Well, I'll bring. I'm not a pedophile. I don't care if she's half my age. She's not bad. <laughs> Most women are so pissed off by the time they get to be seventy-one. Even if they're still pretty, it's it's like I don't blame them on their side. But it's hell to live with. <laughs> you know, they just put the shit on so much, and they're they're just trying to be good, and, and they happen to be pretty too. I mean, it's fucked up, man. If you, it, it just really is weird. <laughs> Well, what, 
when I when I see you, I'm gonna bring my wife. You'll 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 like her, man. She's she's from a small town in Kentucky, and she'll uh she she's right up there with you. She's she she's something else. <laughs> well, thank you. It is uh, have y'all been married for a while? Yeah, uh, thirty six years. Congratulations. Yeah. Man. My third wife was a director for me, and she was 15 and a half years. Right. But I was gone the whole time. That's making fun of the road. Yeah. It yeah, it was, it's tough when you're on the road. Yes, Bob Hope was when he was 60 something years old. He said, How, how did you manage to be married together in, in, in 60 years? And yep. he says, We stayed apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that works too. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, you know, a little bit of me goes a long way. It's kind of a, it's, it's kind of dosing. Maybe we a little hard for everybody to put up with, you know. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm a little bit, you know. There's wear and tear, and, and I'm not, you know, driving me crazy. Maybe a pretty short drive, but uh, it's been a wonderful adventure. And no matter, mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to feel sorry for to be, you know, the money I I generated wasn't the money I ended up with. Yep. It's because of my fault. Yep. And I uh, let down my boys that was with me, and. Uh, let down my kids, my parents, and my things. But I'm still here. That's and right. I ain't giving up. And, and uh, we're gonna shake the world like Morocco one more time because yep. we can. And it's a lot of fun to do. And it's not. I'm not trying to. I'm not looking to kill nobody. <laughs> uh, <today. laughs> I'm. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to stay alive and keep my sideburns too. <laughs> because, uh, I don't think that any of us get to be having as much fun as we deserve to have. Right. And it's there's true. not enough light heartedness out there. If they might come on out there whenever we get there, we'll we'll do it for them. I mean we will yep. make it to where they feel like some of us off their shoulders when they leave and they feel better about it and they won't feel as alone. I mean we can we can do it, man. We can scare them yep. just by being having too much fun. <laughs> That's right. Well, Jim, you're a good guy, man, and then and Black Oak, Arkansas is a great band and we look forward to good things. You're pretty cool too. I'll tell you something, you know I hope someday, someday to be what you see in me, that old phrase. I feel that when I see my fans. And uh -huh. If I could, you know, I'm going to tell you, if you could figure out what they see you as in that higher uh, order that, uh, you know, it's still be yourself. Right. You can quench their thirst for what they imagine and you can have the imagination of people in the palm of your hand. You got it. That's a, a pretty responsible thing, too, in yourself. Yep. But, uh, it's, you know, sometimes it can make it hard on a fella. You know, you know, you think you're, you know, I, I'm never, I'm not no icon. Uh, I'm just a dandy. I'm just here to help, try to help people be able to see, you know, to all the confusion and all the yep. shrubberies. <laughs> it, 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 it's just, I ain't giving up. <clears throat> well, Good is not going to lay down for evil, and evil ain't as bad as it thinks it is. Or it, it, you know, the liberty of your is already put been put down except for if you have your shots. Right. That was a rebellion of liberty. And, you know, I'm just, I, I love the spirit world. Yep. And, but I have certain brothers I, I, I don't like going into, you know, the dead when they figure out you can see them. Mm -hmm. Or by accident, that's the only way they don't know I, I can see them because I know what happens. All of a sudden, there's 10 times that of the, uh, the unliving that just going to come in. They all want to be able to be noticed. <laughs> they all want to be able to say what they've been, you know, what's been bothering them all the time while they couldn't go on. Right. And, uh, I like that conversation, but, man. <laughs> another topic for another conversation <laughs> yeah 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 i could have i could have a whole hour with you just talking about that stuff man <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, and a lot of weird stuff happened. And having floods over in Arkansas right now because nobody ever planned on two barges knocking down a dam mm. from somewhere in Kansas or Oklahoma. Yeah. Now it's coming to the Arkansas River. It's going to Fort Smith. My two oldest sons are there. My grandkids are all there. Mm. And it's, it hasn't been raining at all. All of a sudden, still, we got floods from that big old giant wave from them. Huh. From, you know, it's just, it's us. Usually us. It brings all the shit on us. We're the germ that's killing the world. Yeah, it's a shame. <laughs> Don't give up. Keep, Keep positive. On. Keep positive. That's for all the kids out there. I am. Yeah. Your dark hero, and I am, I believe, a good citizen. It's, you know, I might hear a couple of things that are questionable, but I really, uh, I love people and, and I love children, especially with the young ones, the little ones, the mm-hmm. innocent ones. Yep. And anybody don't care about those innocent ones, well, I try not to be judgmental. Right. I'm usually only judgmental on the judgmental. Judge not. Because none of us are perfect at all. Except for me, of course. <laughs> I used to say, well, it ain't always, it ain't about you, always about you, Jim Daddy. Yep. Everybody can't be perfect like you are. I said, really, you don't regret saying that. <laughs> <laughs> if I were to put your perfection, the world's in trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jim, you're a great guy, well, man. I still got an ass that don't bounce it all in the room. <laughs> Arkansas out. Me too, man. I, I'm in uh, in in Sarasota. Uh, you know, clo- south of Tampa, south of Tampa. The ra- Tampa. right, right. The radio station is actually All in right. California, but we we broadcast right. in Florida. Yep. All right. I gotta go. All right, man. Me, me too, Jim. Take care. You say hi, Sam. Yeah. Hey, Sam. Hello. How you doing? You, 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 you're, you're doing an awesome job. Oh, thank you, man. You, you, uh, you, that's you, not nothing to do with me. I'm just up there to kind of keep and cut them. <laughs> 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 uh, I hope y'all had a good uh, interview. We, we had a great interview, and, uh, you know, he, he's the best. Uh, by the way, I, I, I love your voice. You're you're great on the al- you're great on the album, and I, I wanted to tell you I love your version of uh, Gold Dust Woman on YouTube. Oh, thank you. Uh, yep. I've been doing.
heard that song since I was, God, like eight or nine years old over right. my grandpa's band. Huh. And so I took to Stevie Nicks whenever I was a kid. She was the one. Yep. And so between her and Pat Benatar, you know, and Joan Jett, that's what I did. Yeah, and Janis Joplin, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, there were so many influential female artists, and so I... I just try to do my best, and I'm just honored to even be a part of it. Yeah, so. we all we, we all love Ruby Starr, but you're you're the, definitely the one to, to you know kind of fill her shoes, you know, in the band. So thank you, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, she's a big idol of mine yep. too, and I mean I, I love her to death, and I think if uh, she was here today, that we would have been sisters. We would have took over. I think we so. We've been beating Jim up on the stage. <laughs> one on each side. <laughs> He's looking at me like what? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're looking forward, um, looking forward to you touring, touring together, and uh, the album's awesome. I gave it five stars, so uh, all good things. Thank, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, well, him and Ricky is the one that was the mastermind behind it all, you know. Right. But um, he was Devil's daughter, you know, for me. But yeah, like I said, I was just honored to be on the album. You did, oh. yeah. I love, I love that uh, Devil's Daughter. You did a great solo on that. That's that was great, wonderful, wonderful Thank track. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're looking forward Thank to more, so more, more, more good stuff. Critic, and I was just worried yep. about trying to make Jim and Ricky proud. Yeah. I've been with them five years now. That's and, great. Um, I don't know if he told you, my dad's from you know the Panto and my uncles and all from Black Oak. So kind yeah. Of, uh, How about that? The legacy thing is what Jim says, but uh, I call it faith and. Uh, I, I wouldn't do anything other than what, you know, we're doing. They're brotherhood, and I'm, I just wanted to be a part of the family. What, you, uh, yeah, Black, Black Oak, Arkansas, man, so. <laughs> the band's always been a family. That, that's what it's all about, you know, and then it shows. And, and all, all the friends, you know, that uh, Jim has gotten through the through the years and everything, it's it's wonderful. Great thing. That's what I call them. I call them friends and family. Friends I don't and call family. Them fans because uh, every single one of them, I mean, you get to know them by heart, <laughs> by uh, first name basis, and I, I know most of their families and all. And they've been really great about embracing me in the band. And me and Ruby both had a rocky start, you know, uh, as soon as we got into the band, of course, but because we were women. So uh, she got the brunt of the worst of it. And, um, you know, I went through about a year of, you know, people going back and forth. But we lately, like a You're a perfect fit. What's wrong with 35? <laughs> oh, nothing, but when you're on the stage, you know, and you got, uh, you know, legends that you're playing with, and they're 70 and 71, you know, they, they a lot of people, you know, judge Jim Ford at first, and uh, uh, he used to actually have a girl that um, would go out with him, and she would dance or whatever, and they wouldn't even turn on her mic. Really? So really, like the first couple of shows I went to, huh. um, they looked at Jim and said, we put that on her mic, and he said, you better, because she beat you up well, I would, you know? <laughs> Sammy, we love you. You're, you're, you're perfect in the band. You're a great fit. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys continue to make more and more albums together. And, you know, I'm sure you'll be great as a solo artist as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, it's really good to talk to you. Good I'm to talk to you. I did have a good interview. All right. Thank you so much, Sammy. Thanks for being on the call, too. No, no problem. No problem. Uh, thank you for having me. And sure. you have a great day, okay? You too. A great weekend, too. My best to both of you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Well, great interview, and uh, we want to thank, uh, special thanks to Billy James of uh, Glass Onion PR for arranging this interview with Jim Dandy Mangrum, and of course the dynamic duo of Doug and Don Newsom of BBS Radio for making the music happen for each and every broadcast of interviewing the legends. 
If you have comments or suggestions for the show, contact me at interviewingthelegends at gmail.com. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Interviewing the Legends with Ray Shasho, for the very latest interviews. It is real news, people. Um, I want to also mention, for more information about Jim Dandy Mangrum in Black Oak, Arkansas, you can visit www.blackoakarkansas.net. And also www.facebook.com backslash Reynolds, And please buy the five-star latest album from Black Oak, Arkansas, entitled Underdog Heroes at Amazon.com. And also, don't forget to purchase a copy of my book entitled Check the G's at the, uh, the True Story of an Eclectic American Family and Their Wacky Family Business, available now at Amazon.com as well. You'll live it. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for listening to Interviewing the Legends. Brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Call 941 877 1552 or visit us at publicityworksagency.com specializing in author and music artist publicity plans we shine when we make you shine tune in to interviewing the legends every tuesday at 7 p.m pacific time on bbs radio station one